The veteran punter Bradley Pinion has this one teed up and we are underway from Atlanta. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. They're led by their quarterback from the University of Alabama, Mac Jones. And there's a word that constantly gets thrown around with this guy when you talk to anyone in the building. Potential. They're sky high on what they believe he can grow into in the role of a starting quarterback. In addition, there are plenty around the league who think that as well. And years from now, he can still be leading this offense out. They'll start on the ground, ETN. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. The ball on the 32, it's second and two. Throwing, Jones. They'll complete this to Ingram as tight end. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. And they'll try the left side with ETN. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. David Anyamata, excellent effort. And he earns a tackle for loss. But that's not an easy play for a defensive end because most of his responsibility has him getting upfield and working. But how about his vision to see where the play was going, crashed down inside, and tackled him for a loss. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. So the completion good for seven there. And now third down and six to go. I like it. I like it. I like it. Get everyone involved in the passing game. And you know you can create those great mismatches throwing it to your guys out of the backfield. And on the first drive, that can also help establish some rhythm, right? I think so. It gets everyone involved. They feel like they're part of it. and really gets them amped up as they go forward. Meanwhile, Jones throw into the hands of Kirk. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. That one goes for eight yards. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Now Jones, you know, get this out to the flat for ETN. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and it'll be second down. Well, we know he can run the football, too, but he's a good pass catcher. That's been on display here, Charles, on this opening drive. And we certainly have seen the benefits of what he did in the offseason, which was spend more time with wide receivers, working on routes, working on cuts, in order to make himself a more complete running back and even more of a threat downfield. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. They'll run with ETN. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. The drive stays alive, a third down gain of eight. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only they're controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels, you know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. A gain of eight there on the play. And that'll bring up a second down in just a couple. A handoff running left is ETN. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. 
They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Not too many more ideal situations in second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. They will find Davis on the left side complete. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be second down. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far on the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. Now second and three. Looking to throw. Jones looking for the out route here, and it's completed to Kirk. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Well, no question, this is exactly how they wanted to start this football game, and nice pass there. Now they're set up beautifully, Charles, to finish this off with a touchdown. Yeah, but they've still got to finish it off, partner, and that means they've got to execute at this stage of the field. So we've seen many teams march it right to the goal line and not cash in. They've got something dialed up here that puts it in the end zone. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. He'll get two out of that run, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. A lot can go wrong when you call a play like this down in the red zone, but that's where you appreciate this from your head coach. He's not afraid to trust his guys to do the right thing, and as a player, that means an awful lot. They'll try to run with ETN. They're able to get a couple here, but won't get across the plane as they stop him right around the one. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, but now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four down territory? Might he go for it? And they'll try to run with ETN. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Travis ETN taking it in from a yard out. And the Jaguars get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. And that caps off what was really a balanced opening drive for them, Charles. They work in the rushing game and the aerial attack, and they end it with a touchdown. Strong in so many ways, wasn't it, partner? Their ability to throw it and run it and accomplish their goal, they've got to like the way that they started this ball game. Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. They are led out by their veteran quarterback hailing from Michigan State, and we like that. It's Kirk Cousins. If you ask coaches at any level to design their ideal leader of a team, I think they're going to check every box with this guy. He's got the poise to handle responsibility. He stays calm under any kind of pressure. And he brings out the best of his teammates each and every week. Now a first carry here for Robinson. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. The former Yellow Jacket, Adam Gatsis, the one who got in there to make the play. <laughs> I think sometimes when you're trying to get after the quarterback, maybe it's better to be lucky than great, because I think on that one, he's just trying to get upfield and rush the passer. Instead, the tackle for the loss landed right in his lap. Cousins now on second down. It's caught on the right side by Robinson. That'll go for a gain of seven, and they're going to have a third down. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. 
Back now in Atlanta, second quarter action. The Falcons with the football. Now third down and seven. As they've got it as we resume action. From the gun, here's Cousins. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Plenty of things to talk about here, partner. But to me, their defense gave up a touchdown on the first drive. How about how they're responding, coming back? That's a big third down pickup to keep their drive alive. On first and ten, it's Robinson. And give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're a back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Off the play fake, Cousins. He'll get this complete to Charlie Warner. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 37. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. A quick throw out wide to Mooney. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Seems as if the passing attack starting to heat up a little bit here in the second quarter. You can sense and you can see the momentum because now they're reading their patterns downfield. They're understanding the coverages and they're finding the open holes in the defense. From the red zone now, Cousins. That's going to be caught by Pitts. And the Falcons are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. Just picking up yardage in bunches here. These last few plays, they have moved right down the field. And just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They'll set up to run the quarterback draw. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. Tried to go draw play out of the gun down here. Yeah, they tried to spread things out, didn't they? They wanted to move people away from the center of the field, away from the line of scrimmage near the ball so that the runner could find some space unsuccessfully, though. And that is caught. Touchdown, Falcons. Jarnell Mooney from six yards away. And the Falcons are an extra point away from drawing level. Well, on that connection, it looked like they maybe had some pre-play communication. Maybe one of them noticed an area that was open to the defense to get the pass to. When you put the time in, sometimes you have that great silent communication that you just noticed right there because the best quarterback receiver combos in the NFL, they know how to make those adjustments at the line of scrimmage when they see something pre-play, and they got it done there. Ku able to connect on the extra point, and we are tied at seven. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 here as the kick's away. Devin Duvernay now returning from the end zone. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. A lot of time for this unit to game plan on the sideline after that drive that they watched the other side just score. But remember, last time they were out, they scored as well. We'll see if they can seize that momentum right back. And they have had a lot of time to cool off from reaching the end zone the last time. So have they been able to keep themselves mentally sharp and into this game, even though they haven't been on the field? And you and I both know, one big play, though, gets them right back up to that level. 
Jones throw here taken in by Ingram. So the completion good for six yards, and it's second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here, and what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Here's second and four from the 24. Back to throw. Jones, he targets Ingram for another grab. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not going to catch the football. He's going to run away from me a little bit, and that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. Jones throwing on first down. Caught on the right side by Jones. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That's a 12-yard gain now on back-to-back -back plays. Well, they obviously red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Bro yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. And a strong run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 35. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. His first carry of their second drive, pretty solid. And, of course, remember back to their first drive, really strong throughout that one. Not only is he getting good blocking up front, but how about his vision to find the holes? And he's seeing things before they even open and hurtling through them. On first and 10, it's ETN. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. 48 yards rushing for him now to this point. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. On second and very short, Jones. He's got his big tight end, Farrell, complete. And they keep those sticks moving forward that time with a gain of three. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. All knotted up at seven. Draw play, ETN. He'll work his way up the middle for a gain of about four, second down. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short gain. Second down and six now. And they'll go again with ETN. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. When a drive goes this long, you have to give a lot of credit to the guys up front, those big fellas, because the offensive line is putting something together that allows them to continue to control the ball. And I know a lot of people think they get fatigued on a long drive. Actually, a lot of times the reverse happens. They actually get energized because they're controlling the ball and they're the ones dictating to the defense. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Christian Kirk, a 16-yard touchdown. And the Jaguars will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front. And now, see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. Patterson now for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drive consumes nine plays, all told. And it results in a touchdown for Jacksonville. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. 
McLeod now on the return. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. And the Falcons now going to go on offense late in this first half. And with him trailing, there is still enough time to try to string a few plays together, maybe get into field goal range. Just over 30 seconds to go in the half. They've got it first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. This went into the hands of Pitts. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. Cousins now to throw on first down. And complete to Drake London. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Now second and five. Cousins throws right back to London complete again back-to-back -back receptions for him and it's another first down and with just four seconds left in this first half a timeout call So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. It'll be spotted on the right hash, a 52-yard attempt. Kuhn knocks this one through the post. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot, and they cash in with three. How about the one-two to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal, not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we've reached halftime here with the visiting Jaguars out on top as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome in, everyone. Apologies this has certainly to Coach been a fun one to watch we'll so far. To him we knew this was going to be a battle, to get down we have not to. been Third disappointed. Action, ready to go. This is the kind of game that could wind up hinging on which side can play mistake-free football the rest of the way. It'll be Falcons football, and they trail here as we get back underway on EA Sports. McLeod now on the return. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. So we get set to start this third quarter. Here's the Falcons offense now. Well, Charles, we saw a pretty entertaining first half, close ball game. Remember there toward the end of the second quarter, the opposition scored to take the lead. Now we'll see if these guys can get a score of their own to regain that lead. Yeah, they want to have that type of a response, don't they? Because they want to find a way to take control of this ball game one more time. Gauntlet's been thrown down. They want to see if they're ready to answer it. 
Second half begins with a run by Robinson. This will be a gain of about eight to the 27-yard line. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Robinson with another carry. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. Hand off to Robinson out of the shotgun. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. The corner, Ronald Darby, comes up to get him. You don't see that a ton, do you? Or the cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle. That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball's moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Finally hauled down for the first time this game. Multiple defenders in there to drop him. And there they bring pressure from the inside and they get home. Yeah, hard to block everyone, isn't it? And on this play, <laughs> someone did not get blocked. He's the one who got home. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Looking deep here for Mooney. That's caught inside the 20. It's a big play there for Atlanta. And even 60 yards. Well, part, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. Throwing his cousins. Over the middle, caught by London. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that will bring up second down. Now cousins. This to Pitts, and he's got him. Touchdown, Atlanta. Eight yards on the touchdown pass, and the Falcons have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. That's almost just not right. You cover everybody, but those tight ends, they can be awfully reliable. Very reliable. It, the defense just has to hate those guys. This drives them crazy because oftentimes you can't match up with them. They have either with size, speed, or maybe even just strength. Extra point by Koo up and good. And it's now 17-14. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. Taken at the goal line. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. And Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense, they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just, you know, our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side trying to match each other. Now Jones. Open man is Kirk, complete. So just three yards on the completion there, and it's second down. Up 
Throwing Jones. And bringing it in, it's Davis. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one good for 26 and a first down. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 46. Operating from the gun, Jones. The 20! It's a big play for the Jaguars. And even 40 yards. Oftentimes now, offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just tell receivers, find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air, nice chunk of yardage there, and then additional pickup with his legs after the catch. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. They'll look to throw again. Got his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Evan Ingram from six yards away. And the Jaguars have retaken a third quarter lead. So a very strong first drive in the second half, Charles, as they've turned that halftime deficit into a third quarter lead. And they were pretty purposeful there, weren't they? Measured in their approach. But boy, they executed awfully well moving the ball down the field. Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And that will make this a four-point game. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. The football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. They had gotten the lead with the opening drive touchdown in the third quarter. Now they relinquish that lead back. Could be in for an interesting second half. It certainly appears that way, doesn't it? Almost turning into one of those pendulum games, right? Where it swings back and forth and who's going to make the play that changes that, that maybe it puts it on one side and keeps it there. Looking for the out route, and he's got more. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who could not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Cousins to throw it. And that is incomplete. And that right there, his first incompletion of the game, pretty remarkable. So let's start talking about all-time records because with that incompletion, maybe over a two-game sequence or maybe starts a new streak now because Ryan Tannehill, over two games, hit 25 straight. Now, the incompletion, we're, we're taking this record out of play, but Mark Brunel, when he's with Washington, 22 straight completions to start a game. This guy's on fire. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. First down, here's Cousins. He's got Smith. And now the ball's out. Fumble near midfield. And the Jags grab it. And they get the football. They'll set up shop at their own 49-yard line. Well, the tide definitely seems to be turning in this third quarter as this defense is able to knock the ball free and recover. And let's look at it this way. Their offense is right back out there who just got them the lead a few minutes ago. 
This has the potential to be a big swing in this game. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. Right now, everything they touch turns to gold. This is their fourth possession. Touchdowns on their first three possessions. I mean, this defense, they can't seem to stop them. It's like they're on skates. Great analogy, Brandon, because they are pushing them back and winning everything at the line of scrimmage. They've just been laying down tracks towards the opposite end zone. So to themselves, all they're saying is, if we don't make a mistake, there's no way they can stop us. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and 10. Looking to throw. Jones. That's going to be caught by Kirk. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. 25 yards there on the catch and run. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. Straight ahead, ETN. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? This second and four. Back to throw. Jones finds his tight end, Ingram. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Back now in Atlanta. It's Jaguar football here, and they'll look to extend their lead as we begin quarter number four. Here's Jones on first down. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Now a second and 10. Throwing again. Jones. And completes it to Kirk over the middle. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it. Touchdown! Gabriel Davis from six yards away. And the Jaguars are able to build on to their fourth quarter lead. We talk so often about how hard it is to win in the NFL when you turn the ball over. And here a late turnover leads to a fourth quarter touchdown and a two score lead. And what's more important is being able to take advantage when a turnover presents itself. You've got to come up with points to make the other guy pay. They're able to do so here. And they've got a pretty good chance now of winning this football game. Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And that pushes the lead up to 11. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Well, the Falcons back out getting set for this next drive. 
And the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. A first down throw for Cousins. This pass is caught by London. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That'll go as a pickup of 32 on the catch and run. That is the exact right play call against that defense. So a hat tip to the offensive play caller because he won that part of the chess match. But give credit to his players as well. They won the execution part of it. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Robinson, he'll try the left side. And a pretty big hole as he's down to about the 40. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Good yardage there on first down, exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs, keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. Cousins now. Robinson's got it. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 28. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. That's going to be caught by Pitts. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense can get down the field? It's taken them no time at all to get down here. And now they're set up with a first and goal. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They'll run with Robinson. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Bijan Robinson, a nine-yard touchdown run. And the Falcons have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So how about that for an answer? They get the touchdown there, and it's back to a one-score game here in the fourth. And that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game. And by now, we should all realize they're not going away. Now the pressure again swings to their defense because they're going to need to find some way to get the ball back. And this is caught. They got it. And that could be an important two points that gets him back within a field goal. Well, I guess the coach looked at the two-point cheat sheet, said go for it, get it to a three-point game, and they did it. Yeah, and sometimes you just throw out time of game. You don't worry about that. There's just a feel sometimes in making that call. And he felt good about what he had for a two-point conversion. And now they're only down three and feeling great about themselves. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. Duvernay now going to bring it out. And he's probably realizing he should have stayed in the end zone as he can only muster a return to the 14-yard line. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. They've been rolling the last couple of drives, each inning in touchdowns. So this game is flipped. They were down. Now they're up with the football. We'll see how they handle it. Can we get a spy on the headset now between the head coach and offensive coordinator? Because they've been in attack mode. Had to get back into the game. Now they have the lead. Do you stay on the attack? Or do you dial it back a little bit to try and protect this lead? Well, my cop-out answer would be somewhere in the middle. I think it's going to be a fine line, is it not? I think you're exactly right. But I do think if they can stay aggressive and keep them on their heels, they'll be best served that way. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. 
Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England and just, they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. it I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Looking to throw. Jones. Throw right side is going to be caught by Kirk. No gain on the play. And it brings up third and five now. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Again, he'll drop to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Jags first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that certainly appears to be a critical conversion right there because not only do they keep the drive going, they take valuable time off the clock as well. They have to feel really good about that last completion. A couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Quick slant caught by Kirk. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that'll make it second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. In motion right is Davis. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. Oh, good move. And some space here. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. 85 yards now for ETN, and he's got a first down. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. And a quick throw here. That's complete. A small bit of adversity here on what's been a strong drive as they come up second and 12. Back to throw. Jones. And one more time. Here's Kirk. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They've got a third down, but they are in field goal range already. Coming up here, looking for three yards to pick up the first. Back to the ground with ETN. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. And they'll run with ETN. Fights off the defender. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put an end to this thing. ETN trying to get to the goal line, but he's going to be stopped just short at the one. Falcons going to use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. A 
lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play. Third and goal. Jones. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down, so let's sort this out. Illegal touching. Offense. Late game, that hurts. Take the touchdown off the board. No doubt about it. And this is where you make a great movie scene, right? Go in, rally the team. Okay, we lost points there. Let's get it back and go out and score again. Can he get it done? Here we go. A big play in a tight game late. They're going on fourth and goal. Jones looking around. And this is caught, and that could seal it. It's a touchdown. Well, that was absolutely ideal for them, wasn't it? Trying to salt this game away. I think one of my kids just graduated in the amount of time they had the football. That was absolutely impressive. Everybody wants those salt-away-the-game drives. What makes them successful? Well, when you're able to mix run pass, when you're able to control the football and stay ahead of the chains, I'm using every cliche I know, <laughs> but that's how you get it done because you're not taking negative plays and that way you're able to run what you want to run when you get a chance to call it. Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And this taken in at the goal line. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. So Kirk Cousins in the offense. Down by 10. A little over a minute and a half remaining. They'll need a score here and also likely an onside kick recovery. But first things first. First and 10. Cousins. This is Robinson. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Cousins to throw. That's complete to Mooney. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Well, defensively there, you want to play it a little safe and keep the action in front of you. But you definitely aren't looking to give up plays like that. They still got the cushion of a two-score lead, but don't give them a freebie here in the final minute. This is first and 10. Here's Cousins. That's brought in downfield by London. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores, want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. Here's first down. Now Cousins. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. You got a one-score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. Koo able to connect on the extra point. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Yeah. 
So with under 30 seconds to play, this is the game right here. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. They had to go for it with no timeouts remaining, though, now. This one's as good as over. They gave it an effort. They tried their best, did everything they could to try and get the ball on the onside kick. You're exactly right. They had to try it. It was their only option. And now this game is done. Just take it, kneel, and call it a day. Well, the Jaguars getting set to go. And they've got this one in hand. No timeouts remaining defensively, so this one should just be one kneel and then handshakes. So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, but he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something, and they, <laughs> they did in this one. Well, this was a very close ball game at halftime, Charles, but in the second half, that offense kind of kicked things into another gear, and they were able to pull away for the victory. And Brandon, I think they're the type of team that just looked in the mirror and said, hey, ton of pressure on, but we're the type of team that can flat out handle it. They stood up, stood up with confidence and made it happen for a victory. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. Till next time, we say so long from Atlanta.